Jeff Bezos says he is building a space rocket company so that one day entrepreneurs will be able to use the infrastructure he builds to create new businesses. Just like how he was able to start Amazon because of the existing postal service infrastructure. Though Jeff Bezos puts it best, Elon Musk is already getting it done. He's been sending payloads from small businesses and brand names such as Adidas and Goodyear into orbit as they look to develop new technologies that we could use on Earth. A lot of people argue that we should not be investing our time and money on space exploration and industrializing it. But a lot of the things we use today were born out of space development. It is said that NASA's space race helped kickstart Silicon Valley's tech revolution. Because NASA needed to miniaturize cameras for their space missions, today we have digital image sensors in our cameras and medical imaging. While developing life support systems for Mars missions, NASA discovered a natural source of omega-3 fatty acid that is used in 90% of baby formulas today. As we want to explore and start building on other planets or on the moon, we will need fuel stations, along with architectural firms and robotic construction companies. Or there are companies who have products that can help us on Earth, but they have to be made where there is no gravity, creating the need for micro factories orbiting the Earth. This video goes over the new and futuristic businesses being launched into space, allowing us to see the beginning of the industrial space age. What is the cause of this new momentum, excitement and big investment into the space arena? One of the reasons are billionaires. They have the smarts, ambition, and the competitive drive, along with the money to invest. And for them, space is an unexplored frontier that they can be pioneers in. Jeff Bezos says it is time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. Elon Musk says that most space organizations are setting their sights too low. There is also the allure of big money. As these big space companies build the main infrastructure, others will pay to use it. Today, the overall space industry is worth over $300 billion. SpaceX's 2018 estimated revenue was $2 billion, while their new Starlink venture could bring in revenues of $30 to $50 billion a year. Another reason for the push into the industrial space age is that more companies are entering the rocket launching business, lowering the cost of launches. This makes it more accessible to other industries. Customers used to be mostly governments, but today, you have industries from communications, manufacturing and mining to climate science and car companies with driverless developments. And one other reason for the new momentum in space development is that NASA is handing the torch over to commercial companies. This is because it's been expensive for NASA to set up and run these space programs, and there needs to be the next chapter in space development for it to live on. Sam Skimemia, a director of the ISS at NASA, says that the creation of the iPhone would not have come from a government organization. But the base technology for the iPhone did come from government-funded technologies. And this is what needs to be done with the space industry, where commercial companies take over and use the space technology and systems in new ways, attracting funding from non-space sources. Let's start with a business that is here on Earth today, and that is a spaceport which is an airport for space travel. In the New Mexico desert, you will find the Spaceport of America, which was made ready for operations in August 2019. This is where Virgin Galactic will be launching their paying space tourism customers from. They have 600 prepaid customers and a plan on launching their first customers in the summer of 2020. Celebs such as Brad Pitt and Ashton Kutcher are paying customers each ticket costing $250,000 for a ride to the edge of space. Virgin Galactic was even recently listed on the New York Stock Exchange. You will see this as a trend with a lot of different space businesses. They are targeting space tourists. These high-paying customers bring in revenue that allows these companies to develop other areas of their space businesses. While Virgin Galactic and other companies are looking to send tourists to Earth's sub-orbit, Elon Musk, as he usually does, is looking to take it a step further. SpaceX is in development to bring space tourists on a ride around the moon. The plan is to fly eight passengers on a starship staying in space for a week. The first paying customer is Japanese entrepreneur and billionaire Yusaku Maezawa, and he wants to give back to the world. 
so he purchased all of the seats and will be taking six to eight artists with him. Artists such as designers, architects, musicians, film directors, and writers. People who can take what they experience on the moon trip and create design and art pieces for people to experience here on Earth. The project is called Dear Moon, and the initial plan is to launch in 2023. If we want to be able to set up a base on the moon, and out on Mars and other planets, we will need a way to refuel space rockets. So fuel stations will be needed orbiting around Earth and stationed on planets and moons. One way of doing this is through the mining of hydrogen. The moon, Mars, and asteroids can be mined for hydrogen to create hydrogen fuel. Companies are working on how to mine resources from asteroids and other planets to make this possible. Orbiting fuel stations could also be used by satellites we have today, since when they run out of fuel they end up being decommissioned and add to the collection of space trash. Creating this space infrastructure will allow for more space explorations and transportation missions. On Earth, you already have students enrolled in programs that could see a growing job market, such as the Colorado School of Mines, who have a graduate degree in space resources. SpaceX has a different plan. Instead of waiting for space fuel stations to be built, they will have a booster that returns back to Earth that gets loaded with a tanker. This will then meet with the spaceship that is waiting in parking orbit and refuel it for the next part of its journey. Refueling in orbit will allow for transportation trips to Mars and the creation of Moon Base Alpha. The construction of a propellant production plant on Mars is one of the goals Elon Musk and SpaceX wants to achieve in the next few years. Elon Musk says that Earth and Mars synchronization happens every two years, meaning there is an opportunity to fly to Mars every two years. The goal for 2022 is to land two unmanned cargo ships on Mars, to confirm water resources and identify hazards, and also to drop off power, mining, and life support infrastructure for future missions. For 2024, the goal is to send two cargo and two manned flights. That will set up a propellant production plant and build a base to prepare for expansion. This will be funded by the number of other businesses and ventures SpaceX is working on. The next time we arrive on the Moon or on Mars, the goal will be to stay permanently. So back here on Earth, structures and buildings are being researched, developed, and tested. David Mallet was designing city skyscrapers when he saw Elon Musk and SpaceX land the Falcon 9 on a floating drone barge. After that, he knew he wanted to be a part of building for the future, saying that you can't build the future with bricks and mortar. Today, David is founder and CEO of the architecture firm AI Space Factory. He and his team are building Marsha, a four-story structure they developed for the Mars Habitation Competition by NASA, which they came in first place, winning $500,000. When building in space, you need to build with local resources and materials. In this case, using what is already on Mars, since it would be impossibly expensive to transport construction materials from Earth. So the idea is to send a 3D printing robot that can harvest materials locally to build with. Marsha is made out of basalt rock which can be found on Mars, the Moon, and Earth. It is mixed with a renewable bioplastic. Plants would need to be grown on Mars to make this bioplastic. This mixture is three times as strong as concrete and can be fed through a 3D printer. AI Space Factory's goal is to perfect the technology on Earth, prove it on the Moon, and then take it to Mars. And it could be SpaceX and NASA who are the first customers, Airbnb being the structures for their missions. AI Space Factory also aims to use the technology to build more sustainably on Earth, 3D printing with local materials powered by solar panels. And they would not have found these new ways of building sustainably if it were not for the challenges of building in space. There are over 100 rocket launch companies, each working on building new types of technology, helping to lower the cost of launching into space. A number of these companies are building much smaller rockets that allow for smaller payloads. This means that more companies want their own satellites in space, and the satellite industry is the most profitable space business sector today. Rocket Lab is a company that is already launching smaller rockets, and they are launching rockets every 30 days and can't keep up with demand. Even other small launch rocket companies who have not started launching yet have a backlog of paying customers. 
Relativity Space is another company building a rocket launching company. Since 80 to 90% of the cost of building a rocket is in labor, they are building the first autonomous rocket factory and launch service. This is being done by building rockets with a 3D printer, and Relativity Space are making their own metals to print with. One of the founders used to 3D print parts working at Blue Origin, while the other founder worked at SpaceX, and Mark Cuban is one of their investors. Relativity Space's long-term goal is to be the first to 3D print a rocket on Mars. As new companies develop smaller and cheaper rockets, this will open up new business opportunities in other fields. Manufacturing is one industry that could make its way into space. Since there is a lack of gravity, this means you can create new things that would not be possible on Earth. So will there be a day when we have small space factories orbiting Earth? On the same SpaceX rocket that transported the Goodyear and Adidas research projects to the ISS, there was a biomaterial 3D printer. A company called TechShot is testing and developing a 3D printer that in the future could print human organs. On Earth, biomaterial printers can grow ear and nose cartilage for reconstructive surgery, but these printers are not able to create complex organs with vascular tissues because of gravity. Imagine trying to print something using water. It will end up spreading out and making a mess. But in space, you can create layers, areas, and different sections of cells that are next to each other, and there are no forces that would make them mix together. Printing full organs in space could be five to 10 years away. Something else that we could be manufacturing in space to help us here on Earth is a new form of cable that could replace fiber optics, making data transfer and internet speeds faster. This new cable material is called ZBLAN, and for it to be manufactured efficiently, it needs to be made in microgravity. It would sell for a premium price, as financial companies compete for faster data speeds, and the premium price would allow for the cost of manufacturing it in space. We can start to see how, in the future, space station factories could be set up in orbit to manufacture products like ZBLAN where raw materials are transported up and the final product is then manufactured and transported back to Earth, creating the beginning of the industrial space age. It is sad to think that in 2028, the International Space Station will be taken out of service. It will fire its thrusters and enter into Earth's lower orbit. It will then start to come apart and burn up in the upper atmosphere. Governments came together in 1998 and invested in the build of the ISS. The next space station will be a commercial one, created by a business. Axiom Space is a company looking to build the first commercial space station, so that we can continue having a permanent base orbiting Earth. The company is led by a former ISS program manager, and the team have been involved in every mission to the space station since the start of the program. The goal is to create a space station that costs a lot less to operate than the expensive ISS. The plan is to launch a central node in 2024. This will attach to the ISS. Then other modules built with our modern technology of today will follow and attach to this central node. So that when the ISS retires, it will disengage, forming its own space station. When it comes to making money, there are a number of business opportunities from space tourists paying $55 million for a 10-day stay, to business services such as scientific research, manufacturing, hosting government astronauts, and support for deeper space exploration. Axiom's first customers will be countries that already have astronauts in space and are looking to expand their space program, and also countries who do not have a human spaceflight program yet and want to start their own space program for the people of their countries. SpaceX currently have 180 satellites orbiting Earth today, with plans to launch 60 satellites every two weeks. The business venture is called Starlink, and it will be a new way of getting Internet. Over long distances, this satellite constellation will be able to provide faster Internet than fiber optics, which is valuable for financial companies who can make millions with quicker data speeds. So it would be the financial companies who pay a premium for the service, but in the end, it will allow anyone in the world to have access to Internet. The estimated cost of building Starlink is $10 billion, but it could bring in revenues of $30 to $50 billion a year and could possibly start servicing North America in late 2020. 
Elon Musk used the millions of dollars he made selling PayPal to invest in starting SpaceX. But there are more down-to-earth space businesses. These ventures look to get more people involved in the wonders of space. The Planetary Society and BPS Space are two examples. You have Bill Nye the Science Guy, who is the CEO of the Planetary Society. The Society is a place for its 60,000 members of space fans to join forces and create their own space missions and space programs, as well as guide space policy and work to help NASA with funding. They have had two high-profile programs, one called LightSail, which in June 2019 became the first spacecraft in Earth's orbit to be propelled by only sunlight using a solar sail. The other program is investigating the idea that a living organism might survive a journey through space inside a meteorite. One person who might be a member of the Planetary Society is Joe Barnard. He is another person who saw SpaceX and their rocket landings and was inspired by the sci-fi and futuristic scenes. At the time, he had a degree in audio production and was working as a wedding videographer. Today, he builds model replicas of SpaceX rockets ones that launch and have been very close to landing. His company is called BPS Space, and the goal is to match the advancements of the space industry. He does this by developing and selling rocketry components for model rockets, and he hosts a YouTube channel showcasing his builds, inspiring others to do the same. Who knows what other sci-fi tech is being developed in the garages of DIYers, tinkerers, and dreamers? And will more people be inspired to turn to the sciences and build new businesses, as Elon Musk and SpaceX continue to give us glimpses into our sci-fi future? Amir Blockman, the chief business operator of the space station company Axiom, says that when their space station separates from the retiring ISS, it will be a major stepping stone for humanity, where we go from learning how to live in space to creating a permanent home. On the next episode of Venture City, we take a look at robots and how they'll be cooking our food for us. Hit the thumbs up button and press the subscribe button to not miss a video.